the entrance antiphon. Come, you blessed of my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Welcome to our Mass for Easter Wednesday. As I keep saying, this is a week of Easter Sundays, as we continue to think about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus from the dead, as we listen to the Gospel stories of his appearances to his friends, given to us in order to strengthen our faith in that resurrection. Each week, each day this week, we're hearing a different story of how he appeared to the disciples. And today is what is many people's favourite story, the journey to Emmaus. The journey to Emmaus is actually a model of the Mass. If you listen to this story, you'll hear that first it talks about listening to the Scriptures as the risen Lord Jesus explains them, and then sitting down at table for the breaking of the bread. That's what we're here to do this morning, to listen to the Word of God and to break bread with the risen Jesus. So let's pray that we may do what the Gospel tells us, that our hearts may burn within us as we listen to God's Word, and that we, today, may once more recognise the risen Lord Jesus in the breaking of bread. To prepare ourselves to journey to Emmaus with Jesus this morning, let's first call to mind our sins and ask for forgiveness. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Once, when Peter and John were going up to the temple for the prayers of the ninth hour, it happened that there was a man being carried past. He was a cripple from birth, and they used to put him down every day near the temple entrance, called the Beautiful Gate, so that he could beg for the, from the people going in. When this man saw Peter and John on their way to the temp into the temple, he begged from them. Both Peter and John looked straight at him and said, Look at us. He turned to them expectantly, hoping to get something from them. But Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but I will give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, walk. 
Peter then took him by the hand and helped him to stand up. Instantly, his feet and ankles became firm. He jumped up, stood and began to walk. And he went with them into the temple, walking and jumping and praising God. Everyone could see him walking and praising God and they recognised him as the man who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. They were all astonished and unable to explain what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Give thanks to the Lord, tell his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. O oh, sing to him, sing his praise, tell all his wonderful works. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Be proud of his holy name. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Consider the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. O children of Abraham, his servant. O sons of Jacob, he chose. He, the Lord, is our God. His judgments prevail in all the earth. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. He remembers his covenant forever, his promise for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. Let the hearts seek the Lord We stand and recite together the Easter sequence. Christians to the Paschal victim offer sacrifice and praise. The sheep are ransomed by the lamb and Christ, the undefiled, hath sinners to his Father reconciled. Death with life contended, combat strangely ended, life's own champion slain, yet lives to reign. Tell us, Mary, say, what thou didst see upon the way, the tomb the living did enclose. I saw Christ's glory as he rose, the angels there attesting shroud with grave clothes resting. Christ, my hope, has risen. He goes before you into Galilee. That Christ is truly risen from the dead we know. Victorious King, thy mercy show. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Two of the disciples of Jesus were on their way to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking together about all that had happened. Now, as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side, but something prevented them from recognising him. He said to them, what matters are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped short, their faces downcast. Then one of them, called Cleopas, answered him, You must be the only person staying in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have been happening there these last few days. What things? he asked. All about Jesus of Nazareth, they answered, who proved he was a great prophet by the things he said and did in the sight of God and of the whole people, and how our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death and had him crucified. Our own hope had been that he would be the one to set Israel free. And this is not all. Two whole days have gone by since it all happened, and some women from our group have astounded us. They went to the tomb in the early morning, and when they did not find the body, they came back to tell us they had seen a vision of angels who declared he was alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and found everything exactly as the women had reported, but of him they saw nothing. Then he said to them, You foolish men, so slow to believe the full message of the prophets. Was it not ordained that the Christ should suffer and so enter into his glory? Then, starting with Moses and going through all the prophets, he explained to them the passages throughout the scriptures that were about himself. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, 
He made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It's nearly evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now, while he was with them at the table, he took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke it and handed it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognised him, but he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions who said to them, yes, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognised him at the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Now there's so much that we could talk about in that Gospel story, but to me the thing that jumps out most is that transformation in the minds and hearts of those two disciples. At the beginning of that story, we're told that they are downcast. Everything has gone wrong. Their hope that Jesus would be the one to save them, that has all gone. They've abandoned that hope. They are walking away from Jerusalem. Remember, Jerusalem's built on the top of a hill, so they are going downhill. Not just physically downhill, but spiritually downhill as well. It's all been a waste of time. It's all been pointless. It's all gone. But at the end of the story, what do we find? They literally turn round, even though it's the end of the day. You don't go traveling at that time. You stay in the house because it's not safe to be out. But they're now rushing back to Jerusalem, back up the hill, filled with this new vigor and enthusiasm, with hope restored. Their meeting with Jesus on the road brings about this incredible transformation of their minds and hearts and spirits. We saw it in the first reading too. I'm not talking there about the miracle that Peter and John work, but the change in Peter and John themselves. Remember Peter was the one who, on the night when Jesus was arrested, had so little confidence that he actually denied that he knew him three times. Well, look at the confidence that Peter has today. As he and John go to those, say those prayers in the temple, and as this man, comes and appeals to them, they have the confidence to heal him. The confidence to say, well, we may not have silver or gold, but we will give you what we have. That faith in the risen Jesus, Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. I think that that's the message of these Easter stories for us. As we go through our lives, there'll be times when perhaps we feel as though life is going a bit downhill as though our spirits were a bit downhill. Perhaps a year of pandemic is a good example of that. And there are lots of other things that can happen to us. Whenever we come to Mass, we're walking on that road to Emmaus. The same Lord Jesus speaks to us through the Scriptures as he did them. And the same Lord Jesus is here in the breaking of bread. In that moment in the story when they recognise him, he vanishes from their sight but in a sense, he is still there. We believe that that's what happens in the Eucharist. We may not see Jesus, but we know he is here in the breaking of bread. And those gifts, the scriptures and the Eucharist, every time we receive them, every time we take part in them, they are to transform our lives, to renew our hope, to give us the strength to turn around if we need to, to journey uphill if we need to, filled with that confidence that because Jesus is risen, therefore we have hope, we have strength, we have everything we need. So today, let's pray that like these two disciples, we can truly meet the Lord in his word and in the breaking of bread, and that that can give us the confidence to be his disciples, to live his way, to proclaim his life, to be his brothers and sisters. As well as that, let's think of our other prayers for Mass today. 
for those people we know who need that confidence and that strength that the risen Lord can give. Let us pray for the gifts of healing for those who need that, such as we heard in the first reading. And let's pray for all those who, as it were, are walking downhill, downcast, that the power of the risen Lord may help to lift us and them up. Please think of those and your own prayers and place them on the altar with the gifts of bread and wine I now prepare. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Though we don't exchange the sign of peace, we do pause for a moment just to pray for peace in our world, in our community, in our family, with friends and neighbours and strangers and enemies. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. <clears throat> we pray, O Lord, 
that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go forth in peace. Alleluia, alleluia.